give you a little quick overview of uh, this past uh, game. Uh, I don't know. I say the first half. The first half minus four minutes. Uh, we thought, you know, we came out from the start was was really very dominant uh, all the way up until we went in and waited for about two and a half hours. Uh, a little bit frustrated uh, with everything past that point in that uh, we thought we lost our edge. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, there were a lot of good football plays, uh, but there were five or six plays in that second run after, after the long break that just was not our standard of focus, uh, communication, uh, technique application, and uh, you know, that, uh, that was frustrating, but it gave us some good teaching tape uh, to get some things corrected. Uh, but all in all, I mean, uh, you know, we played very, very hard and uh, was very effective in a, in a lot of ways. I think they came in, obviously, uh, trying to run the jet rocket sweep. They, they wanted to run that. They ran it many times, many different ways. Uh, and uh, we were very successful, and our guys were very successful in, in stopping that. The second thing that we anticipated and saw was about every kind of screen you can imagine. Uh, and uh, that was, uh, you know, it, uh, we were very effective on the screen. So really what happened after the break was we got a totally new game plan. Now, we adjusted our game plan some, too, uh, and then wound up going back to the the original one, uh, just simply because of uh, the simplicity of what we were doing. So that's kind of uh, where that is. As far as the, the game this week, uh, road game in the SEC. Uh, SEC games are difficult no matter where you play, but uh, road games do take on a little different feel to it. Quite frankly, from a defensive standpoint, it's probably a little bit different offensively. But road games are, are a, a little bit easier to manage defensively than they are offensively. We don't have to deal with the crowd noise. Uh, and then it, it kind of brings us, it's just us. It's just us. And so uh, we'll, we'll use it as a positive. But uh, again, to, to end uh, that, uh, we always have a laundry list of corrections. This game past game was no different. Uh, that's, that's coaching. Uh, some of those things that uh, we didn't do so well, we have to get corrected uh, before SEC play. Now the thing about it is, the next game, there'll be some things we'll have to drop on the sideline and get that corrected. That's just the nature of the way football is now. Sometimes it looks like Canadian League with 12 men out there and multiple guys in motion at the same time. It is what it is. Deal with it and play the next play. How different yeah. is their offense? Talk about so the Misses offense or Mississippi State? Mississippi State, I'm sorry. Mississippi State's um, there's similarities. I think probably the biggest difference from where I'm at this point of watching them is there's a little bit conceptual difference on the in the passing game. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the, that's probably the thing that jumped out the most. The run game is really not that different in terms of, uh, of what they're doing. There's a few little things that are different, but not. Not for a major part. What specifically would you have liked to see improve there in that second half, so to speak, of the game against Southern Miss? Well, I thought we I thought we lost our eye discipline a couple of times. You know, we had uh, you know, like on the double reverse pass. You know, everybody saw the sack. You know, but on the double reverse pass where they reverse pitch back and they rocketed it through and then reversed, and at one time they were. Four guys in the backfield count the quarterback five, and all of them were moving in opposite directions. You know, our eye discipline on that was not good. Now, the result of the play was minus nine yards and a sack. So everybody says, great, great play. But from a teaching standpoint, there were three major teaching concepts there that, uh, you know, helped us. Um, I think the touchdown drive, uh, you know, the, the, the execution on the, on, the, on the touchdown drive, uh, there were two plays there. One of them was a real hard play. It was a hard to defend, but we didn't we didn't execute well on that particular play. And then uh, probably the other thing that we had two plays 
that we've repped and we go against our offense where the little stutter and go, fake the screen and stutter and go kind of a wheel route. Uh, we didn't play through the defender. Uh, I, I think we thought we had gotten to a point where we were so good that we just were going unblocked. You know, we just whipped the guy and just went past it. Well, that didn't happen. You know, they get a hat on a hat. And you know, you, you're not that good a player. You just didn't run by. He ran by you. So that was probably just eye discipline. What do you think of the play of uh, Smoke Monday and Christian Sutton? You five games right now for it. Well, it's still a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Uh, they've had some very good plays. You know, I, I think uh, you know people forget we're we're ahead of the curve in quarterback pressures and sacks that we were this time last year. Uh, I think we got one more sack and we got like nine more quarterback pressures. Uh, and and four of those quarterback sacks are Richard Juniper's got two and Smoke Monday's got two. You know, Smoke is a, is a good guy in terms of coverage. He's got a lot of range. He's a good blitzer. Uh, he, he plays the game with a high motor, and he's still learning, and he's still going to have to make mistakes. I mean, it, it's just – it's going to happen. Uh, so sometimes you have to watch, watch the tape and, you know, close one eye so you can get him in there and get it corrected. Uh, but he's very teachable, and he's getting better every week. Christian is a little bit different in that he was at corner for the spring practice and early fall camp, then we moved him to star, so he's really, he doesn't have that much time under his belt at star, but he's progressing nicely. He's very, very intelligent. He's highly competitive, highly competitive, and that's the thing that probably makes it the easy. Yeah, Jordan Peters has become playmaker special teams, doing a good job on defense. How much have you seen him progress, kind of settling into that spot? Uh, well, he's a smart guy. And he's got a lot. He's got more football under his belt than people realize that he's got. I mean, he's been in the big, big games at the big moment, so it's not too big for him. Uh, and he's still, you know, he's young. And there's still a learning curve there, but uh, he's he's progressing nicely. When you guys, how was Jamie Trudeau coming along? Uh, well, Sherwood is a is a really really smart guy. He's a very very good tackler. And he's physical. He's a big guy that's physical, plays with good balance and body control. Uh, you know, I think you guys have noticed, I mean, we've made a commitment on the back end, which is probably pretty rare, that none of those three guys are starters, actually. But they're playing early in games, and they're playing often, uh, simply because they deserve to play. They're good players. Uh, there's still a learning curve there. Uh, each time we come off of the drive, there's – there's something for Christian, there's something for Jamie, there's something for Smoke that we've got to go back over and, and make sure they understand. But they're progressing at a high rate. They're still young, they still make mistakes, but they're good football players. When you, you, you mentioned going on the road, when you have a front seven that has so many veterans on it, how much does that help when you go into a game like this after a non-conference game? Just as far as yeah. trying to get, I mean. It doesn't matter what the game was before. Right. All right, that's. I'm just saying home game. Yeah, a road game. yeah, home game. Uh, you know, we got a lot of guys in our room that, in fact, there's 13 guys that's been doing it for three years. And so uh, they're good leaders. They've got good work ethic, good practice uh, ethic. And that trans, they, they teach those young guys. So it helps stabilize everything. I mean, it's a big plus. Yeah, and talking about getting off the field on third down, one of the big keys for defense. You guys are yeah. fifth in the country right now, third yeah. down. What's been the what's been the key for for you guys in being so successful doing that? I think probably the biggest thing is that we do have a front that can rush the passer, uh, you know, and, and affect the quarterback. Uh, we've, uh, I think you said, what fifth in the country. So I mean, that's that's hard to do at any level, uh, but we've been very effective on third down, and because of that is I think the biggest thing is that we've got a a group of guys with with Denson and, and JD and, and those guys, Daniel, that we can mix up coverages. We're probably, off the top of my head, I, I think I know exact. We're, I know it's exact now. Uh, it's, uh, we're about 38% pressure on third down. So we're mixing it up. And, you know, they don't, you know, in years past, we've had to either be, really be heavy zone or heavy man mm -hmm. uh, just to try to create something. And we don't have to do that now. We can we can we can mix things up, and it's afforded us the opportunity to to be like you said, uh, to have success with it. 
I think we're at, at uh, 75 percent, you know, which is which is fifth in the country. So it's hard to do. It's yeah. hard to do. And then the key to that first, second down run defense, how, how important is that, especially this week yeah. at Mississippi State? Well, I mean, we've played very efficiently on the run defense. Now, there's another play. You just made me think of, you know, everybody thinks it, about the good things. And, and yeah, we are, I don't know, I don't even know what we are in rush defense. It's it's up there. Uh, we've been effective in it, um, and so I think the big thing is that that it starts with the D line. It starts with experienced linebackers, and then those safeties fit in the run. Uh, but then again, the one that just unglues me is we have a rookie mistake the other day, and you know, I think they rushed for 57 yards and 24 of it was on one play, and we've got a rookie there that I means. He's got a routine play. All he's got to do is fit the B gap. And, you know, he just lost his eyes and didn't do it. And that's what happens. It's a great teaching moment. And it was not, you only have 50 yards, 57 yards rushing total. Okay, you know, that's, we, we got it done. We won the game. Uh, but in the next three to four to five to six weeks, you, you can't allow that to happen. And so it was a good teaching moment there. Yeah, that a big moment for your defense there when they got within that one possession. Deshaun was talking a lot about how you guys talk, they're talking on the sideline, let's get going. Next three possessions for them, they had minus nine yards. Some of those penalties, and of course you had the interception to kind of seal right. it. What's that say about your defense, and also what was going through your guys' minds when right. they did get to one The first thing it says is you lost your edge because we shouldn't have had to get going. We should have been going. That's the first thing it says. And that was what I started with at the very beginning. And, and that after the long break, I thought we lost our edge. And there were some good teaching points in that when we did lose our edge. Uh, and, and then they realized, that, you know, we better, we better go back and start this thing over like we did. And, and really we're, from that point on in the game, dominant. Is it good to have a teachable wake-up moment like that? No. You know? No, you just no, don't, no, want, no, don't no. have to teach it. No, you don't need. Was that the most Kirk has played? Pardon me. Was that the most you Kirk has played yesterday? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I mean, it was close. How has he progressed? He's progressing. You know, he missed a lot of time with that injury, so it's a it's a work in progress. But New Kirk is a talent. He's a big man, strong man, he's athletically very very impressive. He's just raw in terms of playing the position. People forget he was a quarterback tailback in high school. It's a little bit different being a three technique in the SEC. You mentioned the sacks and the pressures and how you know you feel like you're doing pretty well in terms of pass rush. How have you seen that of you know take shape this year? It seems like there's a lot more guys that are getting involved in the pass rush than maybe in the past. Yeah. Well we're we're playing a lot more guys. Uh, and then I think probably the the thing that uh, you know, we've got those four guys up up front that can rush the passer. Um, and, and so we can do it with a four-man rush unless, you know, when they start max and protecting, you know, then you, you kind of say, uh, you kind of get the, the noise from different people that, uh, you know, what's going on with our pass rush. Well, they got seven guys blocking four. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like when I was at, went, went to see a game with my son was playing about Dawson, the guy behind him was yelling, hey, Come on, offensive line. Well, my son had to be an offensive line. There's five offensive linemen. They were bringing six, but the offensive line was supposed to block them six. They were free release in the back, uh, but it was all on the offensive line. Well, you know, sometimes things aren't really what they think they are. And yes, I did tell the guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mississippi State they've struggled offensively a lot the last two games. But from earlier in the season, what did you see out of them in those games, especially on the road at Kansas State when they got Nick Fitzgerald back? Yeah, well, you know, they, they're they a very talented offense. They got running back, they got wide receiver, they're big, strong, powerful in the offensive line. They got an SEC offensive line. Their quarterback's been playing a long time. He's a very good player. Uh, so they got a complete group. Uh, you know, I, I think what happened is they, they played two really good teams in, in Florida and Kentucky and, and they, you know, things just didn't unfold like they probably thought it was going to, but it does not mean that they're not fully capable of, of, of winning games in this league and winning even the games that they, they lost. Uh, you kind of mentioned at the beginning, uh, about, uh, going on the road and making it positive. 
have you seen you know, teams in the past that that SEC road trip, that first SEC road trip, can bring the group together? Is that uh, something you think could happen? I've never thought of like that. I, I really don't know. I mean, from a defensive standpoint, we kind of like road games. So I can't speak from a whole team thing, but defensively, you know, it's, it's just you. Yeah. And uh, so they don't they don't really ring the, the bells when, when they're on offense. So, you know, the bell thing is not – Big deal for us. Now, for the other side, gotta worry about the bales. Anything else? All right.